welcome to this uh, episode of uh, abcd wherein we are going to be talking about uh, this particular medical device medical and paramedical personnel in general and personnel working in anesthesia icu and uh, emergency departments in particular would be familiar with this device which is popularly called as an ambu bag the company which introduced this device for the first time in clinical practice uh, brought it out as an ambu bag which of course was a proprietary name uh, this was an acronym for artificial manual breathing unit but uh, this name has become so popular and widespread that uh, this device and ambu have literally become synonymous with each other more so the company itself was renamed as ambu which is present uh, to this day manufacturing a lot of airway and uh, medical uh, equipment uh, but the correct technical name or the appropriate technical name for this device would be a self inflating manual resuscitator now these uh, manual resuscitators are used in emergencies or as a backup when the primary mode of ventilation fails now the most important property which uh, renders this device useful in such situations as well as which differentiates it from the reservoir bag present on the anesthesia machine and breathing circuits um, is the self inflating nature of the bag now compression causes ventilation upon releasing the compression the bag automatically reinflates to uh, in order to facilitate further ventilation whereas the reservoir bag needs continuous supply of fresh gas in order to reinflate without which it becomes ineffective in order to ventilate this necessitates a sound understanding of the structure and function of the resuscitator that is what we're going to try and do over the next few minutes now at the heart of the resuscitator is the self inflating bag in this middle and two unidirectional valves on either side of the bag facilitating flow of gases in only one direction now apart from this we can have several other add on features like an oxygen tubing and reservoir bag with a couple of more unidirectional valves the functioning of which we will be uh, looking into subsequent slides and a mask as well now however the resuscitator can be directly connected to any supraglottic device or an endotracheal tube to facilitate ventilation this diagram here represents a cross section of the ambu bag so at the heart of this is the self inflating bag in the middle and the two unidirectional valves on either side of the bag the bag is generally made up of silicon reinforced with ribs running along the circumference at varying places this not only helps in maintaining the shape of the bag but also confers the self inflating property to the bag at the patient end is the inspiratory unidirectional valve which facilitates the gas to move from the bag into the patient when the bag is compressed at the other end is the expiratory unidirectional valve which allows either air or oxygen from the tubing or oxygen from the reservoir bag to enter into the self inflating bag when the compression is released now as uh, this device is used only in emergency situations it is important to check and ensure that it is indeed functioning properly how we check this uh, device is by sequentially occluding the openings of the self inflating bag and check whether the unidirectional valves are functioning properly to begin with we occlude the patient end of the bag and try to compress the bag if the expiratory unidirectional valve is functioning properly we should not be able to compress the bag as we are occluding the only opening 
of the bag through which the air can go out. Subsequently, we can occlude the opening at the other end of the bag and compress the bag. We will be able to compress the bag. However, when we release it, the bag should not refill as we are occluding the only opening to the bag through which air can go in and refill it. This ensures that the inspiratory unidirectional valve is functioning properly. This uh, next picture here shows the close up of the expiratory end of the manual resuscitator. So the dark blue structure what you see can be unscrewed by rotating anti-clockwise and can be detached from the manual resuscitator. If we detach it, um, the image on the right side what you look is what it looks like from the inside. So the yellow structure what you see is a flap valve or an umbrella valve which is present on the inside of this attachment occluding the or covering the openings present on this device. In the adjacent diagram here, the flap valve is indicated in red. Uh, it shows how the flap valve functions during inspiration as well as expiration. So in the bottom picture, when we compress the manual resuscitator, there is a buildup of positive pressure inside. This pushes the flap valve against the openings, preventing the uh, contents from escaping out. So the upper half of this picture on the right side represents how the valve behaves during the expiratory phase or when the bag is reinflating. When the bag is reinflating, there is slight negative pressure inside the bag because of which the umbrella valve, the flaps of the umbrella valve are pulled away from the openings, thereby allowing uh, oxygen or air to enter into the resuscitator and fill it. Now, let's have a look at the patient end of the resuscitator. Here we have a, the patient end of the resuscitator which has been detached and kept separately. This can be disassembled into several components as shown in the next picture. The first one is a pressure limiting valve, the opening and the valve as indicated by these arrows. They are generally present in pediatric resuscitators. Next is the opening or the outlet which connects to either a face mask or a supra or an infraglottic device so that ventilation is possible. There are six openings uh, around this at the patient end through which the exhaled gases uh, move out of the system. Then we have the actual fish mouth uh, valve which sits within the patient end and you have another uh, concentric uh, membrane as well which sits on those six uh, uh, openings uh, through which the exhaled gases escape out ensuring that during inspiration the atmospheric air doesn't get sucked in particularly if the patient is breathing spontaneously So in the next diagram here, we have a cross section of the patient end, of course, without the pressure limiting valve. Now, when positive pressure ventilation is attempted, the gases coming out of the resuscitator reach the patient end and they encounter the fish mouth valve. Because the fish mouth valve opens only unidirectionally, the positive pressure on the upper side opens the valve directing the gases or the fresh gas to the patient through the patient end. While this is happening, the periphery of the fish mouth valve bulges down, closing the six openings present around the patient end, preventing the inspiratory gases from leaking out. Now, during expiration, when the gases come out of the patient, they encounter the fish mouth valve from the other side. 
So as the fish mouth valve does not allow gases to be vented back into the resuscitator, the periphery of the fish mouth valve gets lifted off and the exhaled gases are vented out through the six openings present along the circumference of the patient end. Thus, the various uh, components of the patient end function as one unit directing the gases uh, into the patient uh, during inspiration and venting the exhaled gases out from the six openings around the patient end. Now, resuscitators, when used alone, uh, are able to ventilate patients with room air, that is 21% oxygen. If we want to increase the FiO2 further, we can attach an oxygen tubing and use high flow. However, the FiO2 would still be variable depending on the rate and the tidal volume. If uh, we really want to increase the FiO2, to very high levels of 85 to 90% plus, we need to attach a reservoir bag as shown in this diagram. Now the introduction of reservoir bag brings in two additional problems. So the first scenario is wherein oxygen is connected to the resuscitator but the resuscitator is not being used. Now once the resuscitator is full, filled up, the excess oxygen which is flowing in continuously is diverted to the reservoir bag. These reservoir bags have a volume of around 2 to 2.5 liters. Once the reservoir bag is full, there is no uh, exit out of If there is no exit out of it, the reservoir bag would eventually burst. The other scenario is when we are ventilating a patient with the reservoir bag and oxygen tubing being attached. However, for some reason, if we run out of oxygen or the flow meter is turned down, the reservoir bag would empty over a few breaths time. After that, um, because both the openings at the expiratory end are connected to one to the reservoir bag and the other to the oxygen tubing, uh, even entrainment of room air into the resuscitator would not be possible. So the resuscitator would not reinflate and further ventilation would not be possible. So in order to circumvent this, two pressure relief valves, one a positive pressure relief valve and a negative pressure relief valve are provided in the assembly connecting the reservoir bag to the resuscitator. So the next diagram here is a cross section of a uh, diagram showing the junction between the reservoir bag and the resuscitator. As uh, mentioned in the previous uh, slide, uh, the two uh, pressure relief valves, one a positive pressure relief valve and a negative pressure relief valve are highlighted by the arrows. So the positive pressure relief valve on top opens up whenever there is a buildup of positive pressure in the reservoir bag as in the first scenario when we are not ventilating but the oxygen flow is still on. So the excessive gases which uh, fill up the reservoir bag and start increasing the pressure would open this pressure relief valve thereby venting excess gas, excess oxygen out thereby protecting the reservoir bag from bursting. So in the second scenario, the negative pressure relief valve comes into play. Suppose we are ventilating and the oxygen for some reason is turned down, the reservoir bag would eventually collapse after a few breaths, after which a further uh, reinflation of the bag will not be possible if room air is not allowed to go in and fill the resuscitator. That's where this negative pressure relief valve comes into play. In such a scenario, the development of negative pressure in the assembly between the reservoir bag and the manual resuscitator would open this negative pressure relief valve, thereby allowing room air to be sucked in and thereby fill the resuscitator so as to continue ventilating the patients. Um, I hope uh, you found this uh, description of the resuscitator useful. Thank you.